Welcome to the online worship of Pilgrim Christian Church in Chardon, Ohio. My name is Pat Martin and I am today's elder. We are Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. United in spirit and inspired by God's grace, we welcome all, love all, and seek justice for all. May the peace of God be with you. Let us pray. O oh, gracious creator, God of mystery and power, we gather this morning as your children, born of water and spirit, through word and prayer, singing and fellowship, open our eyes to the fire of your love and the cleansing waters of your justice, that your blessing of peace may rest upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. today is Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give e Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I've created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
January 6th is the holy day of Epiphany, the day we celebrate the visit of the three wise men to the baby Jesus. And it's traditional that on the first Sunday after Epiphany, we commemorate the baptism of Jesus. And that's why I included the text on your screens as Anne played the song on Jordan's Bank as a prelude, the text of the story of Jesus' baptism as it's found in Luke. The scripture passage that Pat just read to you a little bit ago is the one appointed as our reading from the Hebrew scriptures for this morning, and I chose it because I almost never use it as a sermon text, and even though I never use it, it's actually quite strong, and it's quite beautiful and powerful, but it also has a strong message for us at this particular point in our history. So let's start looking at the beginning of this passage where, where Israel is spoken to as both Jacob and Israel. Remember in the Bible, Israel and Jacob are the same person. Jacob's name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with God. And so Isaiah tells Israel, this is what the Lord says to you, the one who created you, O Jacob, the one who formed you, O Israel. Now these two Hebrew verbs, the ones meaning create and form, are, are probably important because they're the two verbs used in the first two chapters of Genesis to talk about the creation of the universe and the creation of of human beings. Now Isaiah might have meant these two phrases, the one who created you, O Jacob, and the one who formed you, O Israel, to mean the same thing. But since Jacob himself underwent transformation and was given a new identity, it's probably important that we see these two things creating and forming as distinct in this text. And maybe this is even more important when we realize that Jacob was first created as a people and then Israel was formed into God's people in the Exodus. We see this pretty clearly as Isaiah moves into a retelling of this event in Israel's salvation history. But he doesn't really talk about it as something in the past that people can dwell on as a reminiscence. It's not nostalgia. It's something that's still alive today. What God did once, God is still doing, and God will continue to do it. Of course, we read this passage specifically as Christians. We believe not only that God's servant Moses led God's people through the Red Sea into freedom, but also that God's son Jesus led God's people through the grave into eternal life. But there's even more context for us, because people in every age have their own particular challenges. And therefore, we all have the need to read this passage, not only as a remembrance of God's help in the past, but an assurance that God is still with us and still at work within us. Each individual and each family has always had its own hardships to deal with. And the promise of God is for us when we face illness or setback or a broken relationship. But we've been going through a particular problem together, something that is unique to our age over the last couple of years. And we need to know that this really, in God's eyes, is nothing new that it's not something we cannot face with God behind us and beside us and within us. This thing, of course, is a pandemic. There have been pandemics before, and earlier ones were probably much worse. The diseases may have been deadlier, but even if they weren't, people didn't have the benefit of modern science to help explain what was going on or what measures people could take to protect themselves. Modern medicine has also provided treatment 
for people who get sick so that they at least have a chance to survive. And for a year now, we've even had a vaccine to help us from getting the disease in the first place. Even with this new Omicron strain, vaccinated people are barely getting the symptoms of a head cold and almost none of them are ending up in the hospital or dying. But it's more than just prevention or treatment. Right now, many of us are not so much afraid as we are discouraged. God has promised us a way through the fire and the flood. So I guess we can trust that there's also a way through a pandemic. But why does the path have to be so long? This Omicron variant especially has thrown us for a loop. When I look back on our church over the, the past two years, we had a couple of cases before we even really knew what it was or how to treat it. But then after we started taking precautions, even before we had the vaccine, Pilgrim Church was amazingly COVID-free. I know of no cases in our church until suddenly every family was impacted. Right now in this video, I know I'm talking to lots of people who are dealing with it, either personally or in their family. But I also know God is leading us through it somehow or another. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you, says the Lord. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior. Now few, if any of us, are going to change our names or our identities due to our struggles over the past two years. But that does not mean that we're going to come out on the other side the same as we were in the beginning of 2020. Whatever's happening, let's open ourselves up to what God is doing in and around us and what God might be saying to us. It's okay to feel discouraged, but we don't need to give up. Feeling discouraged simply means that it's time to pray for courage. We may not be facing fire and flood, but we need courage to get through the days ahead. And so as we turn to God in prayer, Let's open with a time of silence so that you can pray for what God is telling you right now is lacking in you. And since we're on video, if the silence isn't long enough, you can always press pause for as long as you need to. So let us pray. We come before you in thanksgiving, O God, for you created the universe and the world in which we live. You set the stars and the planets in motion, and you provide for us through movements and seasons and weather and natural resources. But you did more than create. You formed us into who we are. You placed eternity in our souls, and a need in our hearts to seek our Maker. You gave us consciences and the ability to feel remorse when we go astray. And finally, when the time was right, you sent us Jesus to show us how to truly live and how to share forgiveness so that we can experience new life both in the here and now and in the world to come. And so, as we give you thanks, we also ask your pardon for our wrongdoing. For that which we have said and done, forgive us, and for words which we have left unsaid, or deeds that we have left undone. Help us then also to know your forgiving love. 
Empower us to live with integrity in your sight and to serve our neighbors, for we know that we are our brothers and our sisters' keepers. And we pray for them, our brothers and sisters, who suffer this day, for those who mourn or are lonely, for those around the world who live under the rod of oppression or who live in the midst of war, for the hungry and the homeless and the thirsty, and for the sick, we pray to you, O healing Lord. We pray especially for people from our own church who are even now dealing with COVID. Be with them and heal them and protect all of us. For we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, God forevermore. Amen. Amen. 